I got a picture I want to show you of uh, somebody sent me and said uh, after they heard the teaching on angels Friday, and I think this is here in Florida, uh, SUV, they were having coffee here, SUV runs through the curb over the handicap thing, smashes everything while I was enjoying my coffee, but thank God for the protection angels that stopped them six feet from hitting me. Come on, somebody, give it up. Is that all the clap you got tonight? Ow! I've been looking at my students on the right side there in Sunset Hills and on the left side over here. And they ought to at least be, they always bring in the heat. Here's a cool story. This one here, check this out. This says, one of our greeters here um, was on a highway in Florida and a tow truck was in an accident and the giant hook flew through her windshield right at her, but she had just a couple of cuts, but nothing major. The photo shows what could have happened, but how many of y'all think the angel's like, not today, Satan. <laughs> Yeah, isn't that great? We just got loads and loads of stories. Your angels, especially as crazy as you are, they're so busy. Look at your neighbor and say, your angels are super busy because you're crazy. Come on, just crazy. You know they are. You know you're crazy. Like you're doing stupid stuff. Like, how many of y'all doing stupid stuff? Raise your hand. Like not raising your hands in church, that's stupid stuff. My grandmother taught me a lot about church, about God, about the things of God. And I, I've, I've been hesitant over the years releasing a lot of this stuff because some of it seems weird. When you leave a, live a supernatural life, it is very super and light on the natural. Supernatural. So you believe that, hey, I'm sure as I'm sitting here... That big old huge heavy hook that was a trajectory, a weapon was formed, flying through the woman's uh, uh, windshield. You can't tell me that the angel's like, not like, yeah. Yeah, that's right. all the time. So you just need to know there's all kinds of stuff that are supposed to happen to you that did it because you're living a supernatural life. Come on, St. Louis, Ferguson, Sunset. So... My grandmother, she began to teach me about angels, about demons. And, and as I said on Sunday, if you, if you didn't get to see it, go back and watch it. Because I talked about that, that, that angels never die. They are spirit beings that God created. And there are billions of them. In fact, millions of those guys are in and about our campuses tonight because they're just following you around. We talked about uh, you know, attendance angels, and I went through that. I talked about financial angels and business people were like, hey, I want to use that. And so, you know... There you go. You're learning these deep things of the Spirit. But if you remember, Satan, Lucifer, was an angel. He was an angel of light. Uh, in fact, he was the chief musician in heaven. Uh, the Bible talks about when he would sing, it sounded like synthesizers and horns and, and the most beautiful vocals in the world. That's what he was anointed and created to do. But then... The enemy all of a sudden now comes in, takes a hold of it because angels have a will. You have a will because we know they have a will because he said, I will exalt myself to the position of God. I will have them bow before me. I will, I will, I will. And God's like, kind of like that angel did with that hook, like, not today. And then we know that a large percentage of angels of light went over to the dark side and now there are demonic forces living and abiding in the world. I don't talk a lot about demons, but they're real. How many of y'all know they are real? Raise your hand. How many of y'all got some of them living on your street? <laughs> Come on, let's try it again. How many of y'all got some of them living on your street? How many of y'all got some of them working at your job? Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> that better not have been anybody on my staff. I can tell you that. The demons are real. They are real. And... The Bible says this, and if you're a note-taker, write it down. Ephesians 6, it says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. Yeah. Well, what is that? That's demonic activity. We wrestle not against principalities and powers, rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places. It talks about putting on the armor of God. So you put on the armor of God. First of all, I believe God gave us the helmet of salvation. How many of y'all are saved tonight? Online, you ought to put it in the chat. You're saved. So you put on the helmet of salvation, and that's the most important thing because the out up here is where the enemy gets you the most. All the time, throwing stuff in your head. And so we know that there's spiritual opposition. 
my grandma taught me about the book of Revelation. In the book of Revelation, over 60 times in Revelation, the word angel is used. We see that God speaks to John on the Isle of Patmos. We know, and I told you a little bit about that Sunday, that John was on the Isle of Patmos and this great angel came to him and he was tempted because it was so beautiful and it was such a messenger of light. He just felt the presence of God on the angel and he began to kind of worship it. And the angel's like, oh, oh, oh no, 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 don't get it twisted now. I'm just an angel. We worship God, not angelic beings. But during that period of time, God speaks through this angel, and he says, I have something to say to the seven churches. And he began to speak to, not the pastor, not the people that went to the church, he spoke to the angels of that church. The angel of Thessalonica, the angel of all these different angels that he spoke to, Thyatira, when he's speaking to them, he's speaking to the angel. I was just a teenager. But I was learning these things that you're learning tonight from my grandmother. Really awesome. She knew how to pray and how to cook and how to eat what she could. <laughs> Anybody picking up what I'm putting down right now? She weighed about 300, 350 pounds. Big, solid woman. The woman of God loved God. She just always wore it. Anybody ever seen a, a mom, that grandma that always just wore a dress? She just always wore a dress because she just felt uncomfortable in clothes and pants were too tight, but she just felt great in her dress. And I remember she'd sit down and I'd sit on her lap because she, her, there was only room for her stomach and about this much for me and I'd sit on about that much for her knee. I'm just telling you about my childhood right now. And I remember putting my hand on the back of her neck and it was sweaty but kind of cold. Anybody better felt sweat? It was a cold sweat. Come on, raise your hand. I'm just, go with me. Some of you are like, that's nasty. Give me a minute. I preach all the time. This is good for me. And I could feel it. And she would tell me about how to, what the Bible had to say about demons, what the Bible had to say about angels. And she said this to me. And I, I, don't, I don't even know. I, I couldn't have been but 12 or 13. She said, unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain that build it. So she said, David, there's a lot of people that build churches, but the angels, like he's speaking to in Revelation, that the church doesn't have an angel. You got to be careful going to a church that's man-made. Oh, I'm preaching right now. I said, don't go to a man-made church. You need to go to a church like Faith Church where the hand of heaven and the angel of the Lord has said, this is my church. I've anointed this church. There's healing in this church. There's holiness in this church. Come on, somebody. Thank God for the angel on the church. So because you're around the supernatural, you can't help but start thinking like supernaturally. You can't help but thinking, I think God could do that, and I think God could do this, and he could do exceedingly abundantly and above whatever I ask, think, or imagine. You just start thinking. How many of y'all would raise your hand and say, this church has changed the way you think about certain situations? So she began to teach me about that we have the power to lay hands on the sick and they'll recover, and we have the power to cast out devils. Didn't even know I needed it till a couple years later. There's a guy that went to my dad's church. You could interview him, find out this is true. <laughs> His name was Carl Uffman. And Carl Uffman was my dad's sound guy, volunteer over in Fenton, Missouri, just a few miles from where you are in Sunset Hills. And my dad had services that were, uh, I actually on Sunday do four services in the amount of time that he did one. He'd do like two hours, so Tuesday night would be two, two and a half hours. We learned a lot. That's where Nicole actually says she learned most of what she knows about the Bible because it's just Bible school. And we were probably an hour and a half into the service and Carl came up to me and I was just a young kid. And he said, there's a woman out front under the carport that's just insane and she, she's got on, you know, she's wrapped up in a blanket. And she said, he said, when I go out there, she hisses at me. And I thought, well, I want to see this. <laughs> so I walk outside, and there she is, this elderly-looking woman. Just she, she wasn't that old, but she looked really old. Sin had taken her too far. And she was, when I looked at her, she just looked at me and just, ha, ah, ah. ha. I looked at Carl and said, you need to do something with this. I said, he said, what's going on? And I said, she's demon-possessed. See, my grandmother had, had told me about this. So I wasn't scared at all. So I just looked at her, and I rebuked it. I said, you foul, evil spirit, you devil that's on this woman, you loose her and let her go right now. And she just growled at me. 
Carl looked at me like, what do we do now? I looked at him like, I don't know. I've never been this far before. But all of a sudden, I started praying and started praying in the Holy Ghost. And I could feel the anointing of God well up big on the inside of me. And I started saying, you know what? The greater one is living and abiding on the inside of me. My grandma said that I could lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. And my grandma said that I could cast out demons. I, people could speak with new tongues. And I laid hands on that woman. And she just wrestled around with me for a minute. And I rebuked that. And all of a sudden, I saw in the spirit. This is where it gets weird. God opened my eyes. And I remember here because I was 15. And I know this because I was about six months away from getting my driver's license. So I was really aware of the time. <laughs> Anybody remember when you were going to be 16? Oh, my God. And I, all of a sudden, God opens my eyes. And I saw these demons come out of this woman that looked like little monkeys. And they just shot out of her. And Carl saw it, too. And they jumped up on the power line. I know some of you on Facebook like, wow, I can just see this going viral. You know, it's like, oh, man. Ah. There really is demon possession and demon oppression. Now, being demon possessed is different than being demon oppressed. Now, if you're born again and you're a Christian, you cannot be demon possessed. You can be demon oppressed. In other words, the Holy Spirit isn't in there with the devil going, well, this is, I'm going to draw a line, and this is your side of the room, <laughs> and this is my side of the room. How many of y'all seen seeing the Holy Spirit? In no, no, no. So you can't be demon-possessed, but you can't be oppressed. There can just be a, like a little monkey, a little demon, just running around on you, causing oppression, or a spirit of infirmity. This is really deep stuff now. It's highly, 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 highly deep, 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 deep stuff. People can be sick, and it can be one thing. You're sick, I got the flu, I got something else. But then people can actually be oppressed by Satan. The Bible talks about those that are oppressed or have a spirit of infirmity. What's the spirit of infirmity? A spirit. A spirit. It's a demon. Let them call for the elder of the church and let them pray, anointing with, with oil. So that's why at all of our campuses, when we're done on Sunday, we say, hey, if you need further prayer, come up here. Those are the elders of the church, and they stand right there, and they lay hands on people, and they get rid of that demon. Of, oftentimes, it's a demon of oppression. You think you have arthritis, but you, you know, it's worse than that. You have this thing that's attached itself to you, and it's convinced you that you're going to have to live with this. And your doctor said, you know what? Uh, yeah, you have to live with this the rest of your life. But the great physician said, you don't have to live with it all your life. You can learn to live without it. Oh, I'm preaching good tonight. Oh, I tell you, I am, I am, I am. Everybody shout, he's preaching good. He's preaching good. So we see angels mentioned 273 times in the Bible. Angels a lot. You hear about the angel Gabriel. And you hear about all the announcements, the big announcements that were done throughout Scripture, they came through angels of light. So I want to make sure that you get a deeper revelation of angels and how they work. And so we're going to go to Luke 20 for just one moment, verse 36. And they can no longer die, for they are like angels. They are God's children, since they are children of the resurrection. So we see here that angels cannot die they live forever again i want to make sure people don't get weird i don't want to raise up a weird church i want to raise up an unusual church but not weird <laughs> look at your neighbor and say that's going to be a slippery slope <laughs> but i i want you to know i don't want people to walk around looking for what i would call demon on doorknobs oh it's a demon it's a demon it's a demon <laughs> Well, no, we glorify God, but we deal with demons. And what do we do with demons? You cast them out. Yeah. Now, there's a lot of times, too, there's shows that are uh, in, in church. I've seen it. I've seen people, even in recent days, on something will come up on a TikTok or somebody send me something. It'll be somebody just, and it's just a big old fiasco show where somebody's like, she has a demon. I see it. And the person's slobbering and acting stupid. And it's just... It's shenanigans. Yeah. So don't fall into that because the Bible said that we are people of the word. 
and these signs shall follow them that believe. And they'll be able to cast out devils, speak with new tongues, do all the things. But what we don't do is sometimes you start talking about this and the, the tension to manage is people start going, oh, I'm kind of interested in that. And that's kind of weird. And I kind of like it. It's kind of like looking at a car wreck. You're like, I hope nobody's hurt, but everybody slows down because they got to see what actually happened. And so you can go around to quote unquote revival centers or places where there's shenanigans going on. And what you need to do is stay rooted in your church. But then when a demon arises on a parking lot or one attacks you, like I was telling you on Sunday when that girl was in the shower and the guy ripped off his clothes and tried to get in there with him, he changed his mind when he saw two 10 to 12 foot guys with swords in his hands. All of a sudden he wasn't in the mood anymore. So that's when you use it. Say in the name of Jesus. Something's flying at your car. Jesus' name. And then the angels are the one that carry out the work that God has provided for you. So let's talk about protection angels a little bit. Genesis 19, verse 1. The two angels arrived at Sodom in the evening, and Lot was sitting in the gateway of the city when he saw them. And he got up to meet them, and he bowed down his face to the ground. 1915. With the coming of the dawn, the angels, everybody shout the angels, they urged Lot saying, hurry, take your wife, your two daughters who are here, or you will be swept away when the city is punished. So we see the angel, angels are making an announcement again. They're coming in, and, and you got to remember back then, they didn't have the Holy Spirit leading them and guiding them from the inside. They had the children of Israel, we know that, that they were following, remember this, a fire at night and a cloud by day. So angels were used a lot for direction back then, and the angels came and said, hey, you need to get out of here because this whole town is going to be destroyed. The angels of the Lord were protecting him. Now, I still believe and have seen this happen in my own life where somehow certain angelic things have happened and it looked like a person told me to leave, or it looked like a person was there. Have, you, have anybody ever heard of like, man, you know, this person was maybe a television interview, and the house was on fire, it was burning down, and all of a sudden a person showed up and took them outside, and they really wanted to thank the person, but when they got outside, they never saw the person again. Anybody ever heard something like that? Apparently, you guys don't watch television. Let's try this one more time. Anybody ever heard of something like, oh, my gosh, a little 90-pound woman lifts up a car off of her kid because they say something kicked into her, and it was the fight or flight, and that's what happened. There ain't enough fight or flight in a 90-pound woman to lift up a 3,500-pound car off a kid. You'd be surprised what, no, you'd be surprised what the angels that excel in strength went around and said, we're going to lift that off of that kid right now. I got one that I heard that's real from a reputable person. These two were um, stuck out in the middle of nowhere, and they had a flat tire, and they couldn't get the tire undone. You, you ever seen those, like, lug nut releasers, you know? And so they, they got the lug nut tire tool on there. And have you ever seen people try to get on them and jump on them? And the guy was jumping on them, doing everything he could. And all of a sudden, this big guy, looked like a reacher, came up, just went like this undid it and they're like my gosh and just walked away and they were freaked out and so they kind of they just ran after him and they went and looked he turned the corner right there and, and they couldn't see it anymore he was gone what was that i think it was an angel i don't think it was reacher come on somebody ought to help me right now anybody know what reacher is anybody seen reacher you know him I was at a party not long ago, and Nicole went to a movie premiere and I went with her, and Reacher was there, and he had his shirt, and me and Ashton were there, and his shirt was unbuttoned all the way down to here. And I looked at Ashton, and I said, never, ever tell me, because she tells me sometimes, your, butt, your shirt is buttoned too low. I said, never, ever say that to me again. She said, when your bone in your chest looks like his, I won't say nothing. But until then, button up your shirt. <laughs> Sermon's all over the place, but it is what it is. He said, hurry, take your wife and your two daughters who are here. You'll be swept away. God heard the boy crying, and the angel called. I'm going to Genesis 21. I'm sorry. I told you. Genesis 21, verse 17. Here's another angelic visitation. God heard the boy crying, and the angel of God called Hagar from heaven and said to her, what is the matter, Hagar? Don't be afraid. God has heard the boy crying. 
as he lies there. So many times there are angels that are in heaven and there are angels that are in the earth realm. And I've heard of people crying out to God in a certain situation and angels from heaven, that's what it's talking about here, God can dispatch angels from heaven if necessary to deal with the situation that's dealing with you. Genesis 22, verse 11 proves this again. It says, but the angel, everybody shout the angel. angel. But the angel of the Lord called out to, to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Verse 15, the angel of the Lord called to Abraham from heaven a second time. So we're seeing angels moving. And I talked a little bit about that on Sunday. Today, I told you, yep, Monday and Tuesday, I said, Father, I decree and declare today that all my needs are met, all the ministry needs are met. I release my financial angels from the north, the south, the east, and the west to bring all the money necessary to do what we're called to do. I say that all our bills are abundantly and above board paid. God, I thank you that all our staff is paid, the medical insurance is paid, the television is paid, the, the insurance is paid, all our maintenance is paid. I will always have the money to do what I'm called to do. Now, angels, go get that money right now, $5,000, $10,000, $50,000, $100,000, a million dollars. You say, did you get a million? Not yet. Did you get a hundred thousand? Not yet. But my angels are out there. Somebody's not being obedient. But they're going to keep shaking and moving until the money comes in. Y'all see what I'm saying right now? So you're like, much not to happen. I don't believe it. I mean, I order stuff from Amazon. And I'm not like, must not be coming. No, it's on its way. I got a tracking number. And a ring camera when the devil comes to try to steal my stuff off the porch. So I uh, shout amen to that. Let's go to Psalms 91, more about protection angels. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High will remain secure and rest in the shadow of the Almighty, whose power no enemy can withstand. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge, my fortress, my God, in whom I trust with great confidence. I do rely on him. For he will save you from the trap of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. So whatever thing they try to cook up next, you're good. He will cover you and completely protect. Everybody shout protect. He will protect you under his wings. And you will find refuge in his faithfulness and his shield as a wall. You will not be afraid of the terror by night nor the arrow that flies at noonday. So I wonder what's going to happen with the war. There's going to be wars and rumors of war. I'm preparing you now. Are you hearing me right now? Yeah. There will be gross terrorism in the United States of America. They will lock you in your house in certain cities because of all the chicanery that's going on right now. It's not if terrorism escalates, it's when. That's right. So y'all getting scared. Like, I, I hope that's not true. It is true. Write it down. I want to keep it forever. There, it's coming to a city near you. You need to know this. So when darkness comes, you can be like the people of Israel who are being bombed right now and attacked right now by evil terrorists. There's people of God that are in there saying, God, I thank you that this is your land. God, I thank you that I'm your child. And I'm getting videos and pictures from people that all around them, there's bombs going off, bullet holes in their house, and they're cooking food in their kitchen. True. Billy Brim, she's sending me videos all the time. Two terrorists just came in. Hamas terrorists came into a person, a Jewish person there in Israel, and had been raping everybody and hurting everybody. He came to her house, and she just started praying and cooking for him. She immediately started cooking for him. He cooked up for him for a day. They didn't kill her. She said she was just trying to buy time. Cook for him the second day. After taking care of these terrorists for three days, they just left her alone. And they were killing and stealing and destroying, but they didn't affect her because I believe that's not only the angels protecting her, but the wisdom of God going, hey, you know a way to a man's stomach? In any language. <laughs> Y'all ain't even hear what I'm saying right now. <laughs> if I go to Israel, I'm taking Trudy with me and Nicole. Come to it. Cheesecake, they ain't going to hurt us. Verse 7. A thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but danger will not come near you. Develop your faith on that. You will only be a spectator as you look on CNN and Fox News and witness the divine repayment of the wicked. And you will watch safely from the shelter of the Most High. 
Why? Because he's going to give your angels charge over you. Remember I told you that when I, my dad left the house, some of you weren't here, I'll, I'll give you the brief thing. We, we lived at 426 Herc, if you want to go look there, in St. Louis, Lima area. And it was a crime area, kind of uh, just a lot of chicanery in that neighborhood. You know, every time we'd leave, they knew that we would leave and we were going for a while. So they'd break into our house and steal our little stuff. Steal everything. We come back, everything would be gone. Sometimes they put sugar and flour. We had red carpeting. I know, it's 79. <laughs> he had a velvet. Anybody ever seen like a velvet, like Elvis or something like that? Or anybody ever seen the velvet guys playing pool, the dogs playing pool? It's that kind of air in there. You come back, it's all destroyed. My dad got tired of it. So he said, you know what? We're going to leave our angels here. So we started leaving the house, and we'd leave for multiple days. He'd say, I send my angels right now at the four corners of this property, and you protect this place, and nobody's coming in to harm it, and nobody's coming to steal it. And we'd leave, come back, and nobody would mess with it again. That's the way I grew up. So my neighbor, one of them, told us today, oh, people are breaking in, doing all kinds of stuff, shutting off the electricity. And they were, she was scared. You know who wasn't scared? Me. And it wasn't from our three-pound protection dog. Why? Because no weapon is formed against our property or against our body or against your body. Come on, St. Louis, make some noise of this. Thing. So you're only a spectator. Verse 9, because you have made the Lord, who is your refuge, even the most high, your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you, and no place shall come now your choice. For he will command his what? Angels. Shout it again. What? Angels. Shout it again. He will command his angels in regard to you to protect you, to defend you, and to guard you in all your ways of obedience. So again, we talked a little bit Sunday that you got to be obedient. His grace is sufficient. Thank God for that. But you don't need to be doing stupid stuff. God, I'm going to walk through the hood with all my jewelry on, and I'm going to roll up in there, you know, and like with my guns out, like you're going to die. <laughs> Look at your neighbor and say, stop being stupid, man. Like, like, we're going to have to loan you our angels, man. Verse 12, they will, lift up, they, they will lift you up with their hands so that you won't even strike your foot against a stone. These are angels that are doing this. You will tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent. You will trample underfoot because he has set his love on me. That's you, guys. I just heard the Holy Spirit say to make sure, I, I make sure you understand this is you he's talking to you. He's talking to me. He's talking to you. I don't deserve it. I did bad. No, he loves you. I will set him securely on high because he knows my name and confidently trusts and relies on me, knowing I will never be abandoned. <laughs> no, never. He will call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him. When it says him, it just means him or her. In trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. Right. I love this part. Everybody read this with me. What's it say? Verse 16. Come on, St. Louis. With long life I will satisfy him and will be my salvation. Feels really good. It's kind of Catholicly. I like to. <laughs> with long life. You, you don't die until you're satisfied. Doctor said you got to die. I'm not satisfied. You're in an incident where it looks like you're going to die. I'm not satisfied. I'm not dying. I've seen people that I just knew were going to die. And they're like, I'm not dying. Cynthia Mandel in the front row, they said she's going to die. They called us and told us she's going to die. And I was like, if anybody's going to live, it's probably going to be her because she's just too honored to die. She, she, she should have died a lot of times. And then her small group kicked in, and they were all around her like, oh, no, you don't. And everybody wasn't just bringing her pies going, oh, you never know what the Lord's going to do. God rest her soul. She's going to be in heaven soon. No, we had people in there going, you're going to live and not die. And she's on the front row just shouting and dancing and partying. And Exodus 3, verse 2. This is when the uh, fire hit and Moses saw the burning bush. There the angel of the Lord, the angel of the Lord, the what? The, the, angel of the Lord. Appeared to him in flames of fire within a bush. And Moses saw that. It didn't burn up. This angel just... Shoots itself a fire. 
And he's watching it burn. But it didn't burn up. The Lord was doing a supernatural event through a supernatural being called the angel. Now, I'm convinced that just like angels are real and can reveal themselves, that demons can reveal themselves. In fact, if you go, have you ever seen a movie and you're like, man, that's the creepiest, like a movie preview. And you're like, this is the scariest, most demonic, 12-headed, crazy. You're like, who in the world possibly even thought of that? Anybody ever seen that? You're like, you would have to be demented. Who thought of that? A normal human that was breastfed by its mama in a normal home would not think of this. It's jacked up. What? I've been around people in that industry that have interviewed these people, and they said, man, I dreamed it. It was in a dream. Some people said, I just, I was high, and that's what I saw. This is the way I write it. So their, their brain shuts down and their spirit opens up to an evil spirit. And that evil spirit possesses them, shows them that stuff, and then you watch it because it kind of gives you like a, ah, ah. I kind of wet my pants, ah, I kind of like it. Don't watch that mess. You rebuke that mess. You say, I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. Because when you watch that, your brain doesn't know the difference between the real and the fake. Does that make sense to you? Look at your neighbor and say, if it doesn't make sense to you, you don't even need to be here. You don't have sense to me. <laughs> I got so much I want to share with you, but let's just go here real quick. I'm almost done. I'm not done, but I'm two minutes and 47 seconds over if you're taking medicine. 1 Peter 3.22. Who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God? That is the place of honor and authority. Honor and authority. With all angels, all, A-double-L, -L, all angels and authorities and powers made subservient to him. He's talking right now. Who ascended to heaven? That would be Jesus. Who's at the right hand of God? That is Jesus. So God is sitting on his throne in heaven as we speak right now in 2023. And then 20, 2024. <laughs> I don't even know what. I just gained a whole lost a year just like that. right? And uh, to his right hand is Jesus. And all of the angels and authorities and powers are subservient to him. Now we know that the Bible said that all power in heaven and earth has been given to him. But then he turns around and gives all authority and all power to us. Yes. We have all authority and all power. So the same power that Jesus has, which is all of it, and he's at the right hand of the Father. This is a freaky deaky thought, guys. You have the same power that he has. The same power? The same now, I know it's hard to believe because you know you, and I know me. And I know you, and it's hard for me to believe that this is real. <laughs> and I know me, and it's hard for me to believe it's real. But the, all the power and all authority, he said, I have now given it to you. So all angels, it's like you needed all, more angels than what you had. In fact, I've asked the Lord before when I thought, man, I need a lot of angels on this, Lord. I'm like, Lord, if I don't have enough angels to do this job, I'm asking for people's angels that aren't using their angels. Because I got a feeling right now that there's like a big area where in heaven where there's a bunch of angels like looking around going, I wish somebody used me. You know, my gosh, sitting here watching TikTok like crazy. I don't know what in the world going on. I sure need a job. I need to protect something. Oh, here comes something off a tow truck. I got that. Don't even use it for another three months. You need to be using your angels. Like, hey, angels, help me with these grades. Help me with this teacher. Help me get a job. Hey, angels, help me get that car. Come on, somebody. If all authority and all power is given to me, if whatever I bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, well, I'll bind that up right now. And I'll loose that up right now. Oh, that hit, did it? Yeah. You got it. Romans 8, 16. St. Louis, you didn't stand up quite like they did, but you did. The Spirit, 8, 16. Romans 8, 16. The Spirit 
The Spirit himself, notice it's capital S, the Holy Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit. Notice that's a little S, so that means our recreated human spirit. That we are children of God. And if we are children, then heirs. Heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. Joint heirs of God. I was laying in my house today studying and praying and studying and praying some more. And I was walking around looking at all the normal people on my street. And I live on a nice street. I live on a street where nobody went to homeschool but me. I want to see where everybody has Harvard hats on and Princeton hats on and one guy walking around going, Rabba Sando do 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 boko sita ba 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 ba. Some of them ask me, what do you do? And I go, it's a hard question. <laughs> and most of them see me on television, so they found out what I did. And they're like, Joint heirs of Jesus. Now, me and Nicole have a joint checking account. And when we got married, I thought she'd had no money. She had a little seven year old kid with little big people teeth, little people teeth, lived in an apartment, was downplaying that she had any money. I thought I was doing her a favor. <laughs> I thought, man, she said, I want to talk about money. I said, God, I love her. She's got student debts, poor little kid, broke as a joke. But she's hot, and I'll figure out how to pay the bills. <laughs> she tells me, I want to talk about money. I said, okay, how bad is it? She said, well, I'm a tither. And I'm like, my dad's a pastor. He's going to love you. She said, I, I, I tithe 10% of everything. God's blessed me. I said, it's great. I said, how much money do you make? She said, I make about $100,000 a month. I said, I never knew love. I mean real love. I never knew that kind of love. Say what? So I said, you know what? We get married. We have a joint checking account. I want my name on your account. And I want your name on my account. On account I ain't got no money. Whatever was in her account became mine. And a little bit that was in my account became hers. Y'all get what I'm saying right now? So I, I had the same right to write a check as she did. And she had the same right to write a check as I did. And God's saying that here, that you got a joint checking account with Jesus Christ. You can say, hey, my dad's got this. Come on, my dad's got it. He's got it. All authority, all power. You can't say, I'm broke. I'm poor. I don't know what's going to happen. Your dad owns the cattle on a thousand hills. You release those angels. Come on, somebody ought to give God praise. Come on, everybody stand up so I shut up. I'm 10 minutes over. It is 9.09 in Florida. We got to go. I, I wanted to put up 1 Peter 5 eight because it's important. It says, be sober-minded. Be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion. He's not a roaring lion, but he acts like one. He's like, Rah! My grandson does that to his grandma. He goes, Rah! she ain't even scared. He's like, Rah! That's what the devil can do. Jesus knocked his teeth out. All he could do is gum on you. <laughs> Seeking someone he may devour. So be sober-minded. Be watchful. So the devil prowls around, but the, sometimes people are always like, the devil did this and the devil did that and the devil told me. I don't really believe that like you are on that level where the devil himself is talking to you. He's a pretty busy guy. I believe his demons are talking to you. And I believe there's demons on assignment to stalk you around. Seeking who he may devour, the King James says. And you need to say, no, you may not. 
big, powerful, you know, 30-pound, big piece of steel hook that's flying off the dump truck? And the angel said, no, you may not. The long life to satisfy her and show your salvation. Thank God they DM'd us the picture so I could show you the devil screwed up again. One more time, he has missed his mark. So even on a Tuesday night, you go to church, oh, it's a long way to drive. And I don't know. This is where you get oil on you. This is where you go the rest of the week and go crazy. Oh, oh, oh. I can run to a troop. I can leap over a wall. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Right. And then take authority over your own mind. And don't allow the devil to mess with you. Because he'll tell you who you're not. And you need to remind yourself of who you are. That's the reason why I love Joel and Victoria O.C. When that happened, the church, me and Nicole were two of them. There was only like four people that showed up that day from across America to be their friend. Me and Nicole were two of them. Not that they don't love just everybody had their church service, but we did too. But it's more important to me and Nicole that we were with Joel and Victoria the week after that the devil tried to do a terroristic act that we went and kind of shouted with them. And the mayor, the chief police. And the enemy came in a, a demon with a terrorist and the Lord dealt with it. And then the the... The police officers who are ordained to do that, anointed to do that, you should pray for police officers. They dealt with it. And my point in that was Joel is a good one to listen to because he's going to tell you, this is my Bible. I can have what it says I can have. I can do what it says I can do, right? I'll be taught the Word of God. And then at the end he says, I'll never be the same. No, never, never, never in Jesus' name. I don't have to get started with something funny. He's just going to keep doing that. Every time. People expect it. If he, if, he, if he didn't do it, you'd be like, what happened? <laughs> so listen to people that build you up. Not to tear you down. But I do want you to grow so you know how to deal with demonic activity. Because it's real. And I don't want anybody at our church being demon oppressed spirit of pornography or spirit of drug addiction or whatever it is is stalking you you need to look back and say oh, stop it in the name of you, you quit that you don't talk to a devil like if you leave me alone if you please leave me alone man I wish you'd leave me alone no you take authority over it. somebody come into your house Remember this thing now on the news all the time squatters squatters in your house <laughs> Resquat yourself. Squat in my house, I come squat back at you. Got quiet in here, so political. <laughs> you tell me if somebody came in tonight and told you, I'm going to take your TV, take your kids, take your stuff. How many of y'all ain't You're like, not today. Uh-uh. No, 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 no. We, we're dealing with this right here and right now. And you take authority over your own mind. The devil, not today. You come at me with spirit and sword. I come to you in the name of the Lord. Yeah. Take that. Hey, listen. I just heard the Holy Ghost tell me this. I just heard it as close as I've ever heard it. He said a lot of them would do that if they could see it. But he said they haven't been able to see it. But there is things in your house that you need to go home tonight and deal with. You go home and clean your house. Just open up the door tonight and say, hey, Devil, I command all demon oppression, the restless leg syndrome, the demonic captivity, the spirit of alcohol, the spirit of I, I pay the rent in this place. God is taking care of me. I'm joined heirs with Jesus. I cleanse this house right now in the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody ought to give God some ready praise. Hey, thank you for watching Faith Church on YouTube. And I want you to subscribe so you can know whenever we go live and post new content. You can also comment below and let us know if the message spoke to you. When you're watching, also know that we want to pray for you. We want to know what's going on in your world. So you can comment below and we'll pray for you. Thanks again for watching on YouTube and we'll see you next time.